Welcome to another edition of the Go Nose Podcast. I'm your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me, in my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Today is February 4th, 2020. I got about five different segments here for this episode. I hope you enjoy it. Um, Super Bowl review is coming. Um, So let's go ahead and get started. Um, First episode is entitled Clemson doesn't respect Florida State anymore. Um, And this is what I wrote about that. Florida State doesn't respect Florida State anymore. Why should they? We suck right now. What's more insulting is how they act like they do respect Florida State. Then go on to hang 50 points on us. You know, you you knew you was going to do that the whole time. And for me, just say it. Be confident. Be who you are. Like after that loss to LSU, Trevor Lawrence said, we will be back. Dabo Sweeney said, um, you know, we're going to be back. Trevor Lawrence is my quarterback. I wouldn't take anybody else over him. These are going to be the roaring 20s. I like that bravado. And, um, um. I just hope one day Florida State can match what Clemson is doing. Um, I don't feel like it will be this season. Um, I could be wrong, and I hope I am wrong, but the chances um, of us beating Clemson this year are slim to none, and probably for the next several years. Um, This team has to make up their mind that they're going to come off the ball and punch people in the mouth, and from the skill positions, they're just going to, you know, outplay people. Um until that happens it's a moot point um you know clemson is the standard right now i know lsu beat them this year but i think that was just an abbreviation um i don't see lsu going back to the college football playoff this coming season um because they they're losing a lot of talent um I think Alabama is going to reassume their position within the uh, hierarchy of college football. And Clemson is going to be there. Um, One, they have extraordinary talent. And two, they play a very easy schedule. Um, So, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, You know, until Florida State starts getting consistently, you know, four and five stars like they did in 12 13 14 and 15 is is really a moot point um and and even college football back then was a different game um i think you know anytime you get six seven eight five five stars on your team come on that's a red flag bro come on (laughs) you know so um but kudos to clemson man i'm not gonna be a hater they're doing their thing okay they've been to the playoff five straight years they've won two national championships and i give them nothing but respect they deserve it they're they're the the standard by which all programs should be measured at this point um them in uh alabama and um you know that's the rivalry in college football right now florida state can most definitely get back but the florida state administration is going to have to quit being cheap i've said this on virtually every episode of this podcast it's one of the reasons why i started this podcast um so let me know what you think about that segment and i'm gonna move on to the next segment which is entitled florida state has to be a running team in 2020 and this is what i wrote about that florida state has to be a running team in 2020 um I definitely think so because there's no Trevor Lawrence type quarterback on this team. The O-line stunk last season. So unless uh, these O-linemen go through some sort of Captain America, super soldier, super soldier metamorphosis, um, I really don't see, you know, I really don't see anything different coming about this coming season. Now, Norvell, of course, runs a different scheme. From what I've read, it's like a West Coast type scheme where you get the ball out of your hands really fast. The uh, quarterback doesn't have to sit here and read the defense. So we'll see, man. Um, 
I don't see how Florida State pass blocks or run blocks. Maybe these freshman tackles might be the second coming of Walter Jones, but I doubt it. Uh, when in doubt, run the football with all of these tight ends on the roster. Now somebody has to like pancake and linebackers and safeties. Um, run the ball, play good defense, let the QB hit high percentage throws, and Florida State will be uh, somewhat okay. Um, I think that's the way Norvell has to go about this. Um, and that, I think that's why he's loading up at running back. Um, in particular, I hope he, again, from yesterday's episode, I hope he gets the kid uh, Edwards from uh, South Georgia. I think he's a player. I've watched some of his tape. You know, that's the kind of running back that we need, a hard-nosed guy that can catch the ball out of the, the backfield. And, uh, you know, holy, hopefully, Kalen LeBourne can be 100% healthy. I really want him to be the guy. He's been there forever. And, uh, you know, I definitely think he's probably the fastest guy out of that group. Um, so we'll see what happens. Let me know what you think about that segment. And moving on to the next segment, which is entitled, can the fullback make a comeback in college football? And this is what I wrote about that. Can the fullback make a comeback in college football? I don't know. Not many teams run the West Coast scheme anymore. They use tight ends to fill that role now. Uh, in the spread offense, Wisconsin and Boston College were really the last teams left in the FBS who use a fullback. I missed the position. It's like the middle linebacker of the offense and an unsung hero. The running back in a run or run or run oriented offense gets all the glory, but it's usually the fullback who is doing the grunt work. The great ones usually can do it all. Run, catch, block is really a unique position. Not many teams in FBS will deploy the fullback in 2020. I think Wisconsin will be the only team left in the FBS uh, that will do it. Boston College uh, fired their coach and they're going to a spread attack. Um, so again, please bring back the fullback. Um, you know, I love this position, man. I love a guy that will run, run through the hole, you know, bust a linebacker in his mouth knock him out and then move on try to move on to the safety and knock him out paving the way for the running back to score you know it's a very uh collision based position so uh let me know what you think about that segment um moving on to the next segment which is norvell is checking every box thus far and Let's see. Flipping over to the next page. All right. Norvell is checking every box thus far. Uh, he lost a DB's coach, and almost within 24 hours, he replaced him. He lost a tight end to the Georgia Bulldogs, and he signed two additional tight ends I think within two weeks Cam Makers went to the pros he got Corbin from Texas A&M and uh LaDamian I don't know if it's LaDamian or LaDamian Webb from junior college so I will say kudos to Norvell he's on his game uh grabbing two assistant coaches from Auburn is big it says a lot about Norvell's character that two assistants from a SEC program left and came to Florida State. They must think a lot of him, Norvell. Um, recruiting wise, he's getting the guys to come. He's getting guys to come to Florida State. He flipped a couple of guys, uh, a tight end and a receiver, or I'm sorry, a tight end and an athlete to uh, come to Florida State. Again, kudos to Norvell. Again, I'm not all aboard the Norvell Express like. Uh, some of the people in his fans, fan base. I want everything that he's doing positive to translate 
to the uh, to the football field. That's that's where it really matters the most. Um, so, like I always say, I take the wait and see approach. Um, Norvell did get three high school tackles and one grad transfer. Hopefully, they pan out. Um, uh, two of them were, or actually three of them, the grad transfer and the two high school guys were early enrollees. So, hopefully, this new strength and conditioning guy can um, get his uh, get those guys up to par and they can maul people in the run game. Um, So that's good. That's segment number four for this episode. I got one more segment. I hope you enjoyed that one. Let me know what you think. And the last segment is entitled Florida State football team as transformers, in particular, Autobots. Who would be who? And this is just some of the stuff that I think of when I'm, I write this stuff during my downtime at work. Um, so here we go, man. Florida State football team is Autobots. Who would be who? Well, first and foremost, the offensive line has to be the Dinobots, or at least that's who should they. At least that's who they should strive to be: physical and reckless, um, controlled reckless. Um, you know, they need to knock people off the ball. They need to roll great people. Um, Keyshawn Helton is Bumblebee, smart and fast. DJ Matthews is Cliff Jumper, smart and fast with no fear. Tamorion Terry, sideswipe, a Lambo with speed. Cam McDonald, Sunstreaker, another Lambo with speed. James Blackman, hot rod, one day will be the leader of this team. Janoris Jenkins, Cup, the old guy with wisdom. Uh, Marvin Wilson, Optimus Prime, the unquestioned leader of the team. Corey Durden, Ultra Magnus, a faithful soldier ready for battle. And this one I love right here, Joshua Kando, Skyfire. You know, Skyfire, one of the biggest Transformers or biggest Autobots in, on the whole team, man. So he fits that perfectly. I thought that was like the best one. Jo uh, Joshua Kando is Skyfire, a huge jet that's very fast with, with exceptional intellect. And also, I think this one is a good one. Also, Asante Samuel, Blaster. Blaster was the uh, cassette player that used to run his mouth all the time. <laughs> and that's all Asante Samuel does on the field is run his mouth. But he's a good player, though. Uh, Jaden Lars would be a smokescreen uh, fast and packs a punch Hamsa Nazardin jazz always ready to lure the boom uh, on somebody uh, Isaiah Bolden uh, streaks a fast Corvette who's articulate uh, Kalen LeBorn red alert another Lambo with medical issues <laughs> Oh man. All right. And uh I did I also did some linebackers. Jaleel McCray as Braun, a small, tough, strong guy. Amari Gaynor as Mirage, a fast car with exceptional intellect. Kayvon Glenn, Beachcomber, peaceful until provoked. Kaylin I'm sorry. Kayvon Glenn as Beachcomber, peaceful until provoked. Kaylin Deloach. As gear, small but packs a punch. So, let me know what you think about that, man. Um, I might do in another episode like Miami and Florida as Decepticons. I don't know. Um, let me know what you think about this episode. That's going to conclude that segment. Um, this episode is available on YouTube. It's available on on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify podcast if you're listening to this on youtube please go down to the description click on one of the links rate review and subscribe wherever you listen to this podcast at i appreciate it but if you could please just click on one of the links rate review and subscribe 
I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, go Nose.